Johnson. It is my distinct honor to welcome Reverend Dr. Bernice King to the show. Welcome to the table, Dr. King. I am delighted and honored to be here with you. I so thank you. Been looking forward to this moment. I have too for a <laughs> long time, and I just think it is just so wonderful to get to tell the story of your mother. I know everyone asks you often about the story of your father. Yes. But we want to highlight your mother on uh, and honor this amazing ancestor on her birthday. Yes. And I wanted just to start by uh, just talking about the lessons that you learned from her, just what you know about her as a child. I mean, this was a, a little girl growing up in Marion, Alabama, who already kind of had a purpose mm -hmm. and a mission that was instilled by her parents mm -hmm. about education, right? Explain. Yeah, she, um, her, her mother um, used to always tell her and her brother and sister that you all are gonna get an education, mm -hmm. you know, even if I have to wear one dress. Mm. Um, because my grandmother, Bernice, who I'm named after, Bernice McMurray Scott, um, only had a fourth grade education mm. during those times, of you know, of segregation. Um, it was very difficult for many of them uh, to, to get an education. Mm -hmm. um, and you're, you're talking about the early uh, 1900s, 1900s right. uh, you know. Um, and then my grandfather only got an eighth grade education, but was very wow. good at, at, at math. Uh, and so, you know, they, they stressed education, um, and my grand, grandfather in particular um, was very, in, in, you know, enterprising, entrepreneurial mm -hmm. spirit. He owned his own um, truck to haul lumber. Mm. At that time, the only black, as they said back then, only colored person or Negro. Negro, right. Um, Which I'm that, sure came with its challenges. It did come with that its challenges. She watched and he was and very lost. ambitious yeah. because he eventually. Uh, purchased a, a lum lumber mill. It got burned down. A white mm -hmm. man tried to buy it from him. He refused to sell it, and suddenly it burned down. Suddenly, but it let it stand, instead of letting that stop him, he decided to go and do something else. So she know, had some and didn't power. harbor all of that anger mm -hmm. inside of him and transferred that to my mother and her siblings mm -hmm. um, when their home was burned, mm -hmm. that she grew up in. Um, in Heiberger, Alabama. Mm -hmm. um, it was a Thanksgiving uh, evening, and her and my sister and my uncle were away at the Lincoln School where they mm -hmm. attended, which was only a few miles away, but back then it was a long way right. because of the transportation issues. They had to oftentimes stay in town to go to the school. Understood. But that day, they, they I don't know, they came home um, and Home was gone, but my grandfather made them get on the floor and pray, um, talked about not hating the people, wow. forgiving, all of these early lessons. And then- Because the message of burning the home was very clear. Oh yeah, very clear, <clears throat> very clear. Um, but then my grandfather would often face, you know, individuals who wanted to really destroy him. Mm -hmm. And so he would get pulled over, gun to his head, and he used to tell my mother and her siblings, you know, if you look a white man in the eye, he can't do anything to you, he won't harm you. Uh, so she said she learned to grow in fear of the ones that she loved. She learned, she mm. learned how to really manage them. You learn how to maneuver. Was she ever with him when those, th those experiences No, she was happened? never with him. But it surely leaves a, a, a mark. Right, but your... because of the circumstances that they lived in, you know, with the segregated South in particular, the fact that she had to walk to school and the white kids were bust, mm -hmm. you know, uh, and then she had she went to Lincoln Normal School and her eyes began to open up because there were white missionary teachers that came um, to that school and taught them and opened up their whole perspective about the world and outside of Alabama. So. Right. From and an early age, she was trying to figure out, what, why am I here? What's my right. purpose? What am I supposed and to do? And when she got the Lincoln, that question was raised again, and she understood there's something in this world that I'm supposed to do to make the conditions that we live in better. And then got to Antioch College. Right, because I was going to say, I mean, again, we're talking, you know, 19, I guess, at that point, we're the, almost the late 30s, early 40s. Exactly. This is a little black girl in Alabama who says, I'm going to Ohio for college. Right. And I'm going to Boston for graduate school. Right. I mean, that's a lot to even claim that and then do it. It, it, it was a lot, but, you know, she had a strong foundation with her parents and even her grandparents um, who were very well known in the community mm -hmm. uh, as well and were doing incredible work. 
um, and service. Uh, so she, she had all of these roots. And by the way, where she grew up is Perry County, Alabama. Mm -hmm. At one point, there was a study done. I'm not sure what year it was. It may have been somewhere around the year late 90s or 2000s. It was discovered that the largest number of black PhDs had roots oh. in Perry County, Alabama. Mm. Isn't that something? There's something in the DNA, in the That's soil, exactly. something there, our ancestors and there. And Perry County mm. um, is also where Juanita Abernathy ah, grew up. Yes. Jean Charles Young, who married Andrew mm -hmm. Young, yes. grew up, and Coretta Scott King. Mm. My mother only knew the family of Jean Charles Young. She was a little bit younger than my mother. Mm -hmm. So they were not classmates, but they went to the North same school. They were school. familiar with each other. Then found out, when I met Bishop Jakes, his mother was born in Perry County, Alabama, mm. went to the same school as my Some mom. Some strong, strong, deep roots yes. in Perry. We need to figure out more about Perry. Yes. Different episode. We got to figure <laughs> that out, though. It's not like a trip. So listen, I want to, before we uh, run out of time in this part of the conversation, I want to get to the way she ended up studying Gandhi. Because everyone associates yeah. your father as the one, you know, who studied the uh, teachings of nonviolence. But Coretta Scott was like, yeah, I'm quite familiar. Yeah. Right? So while she was at Lincoln Normal School, um, they had a visit by Byatt Rustin, oh, you know, who was yes. part of Fellowship of Reconciliation, and Fellowship of Reconciliation had strong roots uh, with nonviolence mm -hmm. um, and ties back to Mahatma Gandhi. And so he came to the school when she was about 15 years of age and talked about Mahatma Gandhi. Uh, and so that was her early exposure to him. Very And, early. and I'm, I'm almost sure she did a little bit more studying after that. Uh, so by the time she met my father and they were having conversations, you know, it was like it, this woman from the country that he thought they exactly. have not had a lot to offer. Right. And that's what I <laughs> want to talk about. Her. Oh, I've got something Surprised for you. Him. I've yes. got something for you. Uh, yeah. I want to talk about that when we come back, when we return, how they met and how he, I don't want to say underestimated, but he was impressed and surprised. And she was like, yeah, you, you I'm from Perry County. <laughs> <laughs> I know. All right. So when we return, we're going to continue this conversation with Reverend Dr. Bernice, Bernice King. Stay with us.